Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer on Sunday, the 14th of June. My name is the Reverend Paul Lavender. I'm the senior pastor of Mount Pleasant Baptist Church here in Northampton. Trust you've had a good night's sleep. It's a beautiful day here today as the day starts. So as we begin this day by recognising the presence of the Lord with us, let's bow our heads, shall we? And remember that he is here and his spirit is with us. Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words, yet their voice, their voice is not heard, yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring for ever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Thanks be to God for his word. Let us pray. We gather to meet God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, to be aware of his presence in our day, and we thank you, Lord, now that you are here, that your spirit dwells within us. We come to bring you our worship and offer you our praise. To be conscious that you walk beside us and we do not make the journey of life alone. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, draw near to us as we draw near to you. Amen. And now in quietness and with confidence, let us confess our sins in silence to Almighty God, sins of omission and commission in thought, word and deed. As we confess our sins, we pray, Lord, have mercy upon us. So may Almighty God have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Give us time for amendment of life and bring us the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. This week in our morning prayers, we've read through the letters to the churches in Revelation. 
we come to the final one today, the end of chapter 3, the letter to the church in Laodicea, Revelation 3, verses 14 to 22. And to the angel of the church in Laodicea write, The words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the origin of God's creation. I know your works. You are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were either cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. For you say, I am rich. I have prospered and I need nothing. You do not realise that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind and naked. Therefore, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may be rich and white robes to clothe you and to keep the shame of your nakedness from being seen and salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. I reprove and discipline those whom I love. Be earnest, therefore, and re repent. Listen, I am standing at the door, knocking. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come to you and eat with you and you with me. To the one who conquers, I will give a place with me on my throne just as I myself conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thanks be to God for his word. This is a passage that's very well known because of that uh, verse, Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. It's a verse that's often used uh, by ministers, by preachers, by teachers uh, to elucidate the personal contacts that Christ wishes to make with each one of our lives. And there's truth in that. And of course, we may well be influenced as well by the gorgeous painting that exists both in the chapel of Keble College, Oxford, and at the National Gallery of Holman Hunt, The Light of the World. But of course, that's not the whole truth of what is being said here, because the knocking that Jesus does is not at the heart of the individual, but at the heart of the church. Now, of course, there is no way into the life of the church except through the lives of individuals I know, but God would, I believe, in these days in particular, ask us to evaluate whether we are as passionate for him and as full on for him in our worship, in our witness, in our service, as we should be. Too often in structures and organisations within our respective churches and traditions. We can be seen to go through the motions and what's worse just as in the church, case of the church in Laodicea we do not really appreciate fully our lack of the things that sustain our life. Now at this time there'll be many people who are lamenting the missed times of communion of fellowship of uh, celebrating the sacramental life of the church however you want to describe it. But that place, that way into the life of the church begins most surely through the life of those who make up the church, who make up the body of Christ. And so today I want to ask you a question. As far as it depends on you, is your heart open to receive from the Lord? Whatever he would say to you and however he would grace you with his presence. And as we over these next weeks and months begin the task of rebuilding the routine of the ministry and worship of the churches around our county and around our country. 
Will you play your part so that Christ may not have to knock for entrance into our church, but may be welcomed gladly into our lives and that our lives may affect not only the church, but the world into which we are sent to serve? Let us pray. In this time of COVID-19, we pray, when we aren't sure, God, help us to be calm. When information comes from all sides, correct and not, help us to discern. When fear makes it hard to breathe and anxiety seems to be the order of the day, slow us down, God. Help us to reach out with our hearts when we can't touch with our hands. Help us to be socially connected when we have to be socially distant. Help us to love as perfectly as we can, knowing that perfect love casts out fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the doctors we pray, for the nurses we pray, for technicians and cleaners and aides and caregivers we pray. For researchers and theorists, the epidemiologists and investigators. For those who are sick and for those who are grieving, we pray. For all those who are affected all around the world. We pray for safety, for health and for wholeness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May we feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, clothe the naked and house those without homes. May we walk with those who feel they are alone. And may we do all that we can to heal the sick in spite of the epidemic, in spite of the peer, fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, O oh God, that we may help each other in the love of the Creator, in the name of the Healer, in the life of the Holy Spirit that is in all and with all, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for a moment now, we pray for those that we know and love personally. In a moment of quiet prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We share together in saying the Lord's Prayer in whatever language or form is common for us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May the blessing of God fall upon our community. May it be a safe place full of understanding and acceptance where we can be as we are without the need of any masks or pretense or image. May our community be one of discovery, discovery of the love of God, the peace of Jesus and the transforming work of the Holy Spirit, where from the clay all can emerge to deepen and refine their knowledge of your kingdom. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and with those whom you love with God's people everywhere, this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining me for prayer this morning. God bless you. Uh, thank you for your prayers for me. Please keep him for, uh, praying for one another. Um, there are various events and services happening throughout the day. Uh, 
at 9.30, there's a kids service and a 10.30 service for all. You're welcome to join us for that. And then this evening at 9, again, we will be praying together. And uh, I do hope that you will continue to uh, join with us as we make uh, our prayer uh, day by day, both for ourselves and for our world. So thank you for joining me. Until we meet again, goodbye and God bless.